Good afternoon everyone. We are going to be doing a quick video on some drip irrigation repair after I planted uh, up there in the bed where the red obelisk beach is. So I'm going to grab a few things including the emitters that I need, the tools that I need, uh, and I think I have the actual distribution tubing in the garage. So I'll go grab that too. So if you're new to drip irrigation, it can be kind of um, difficult, I guess, to figure out what all you need. And I put together a video about two years ago in extensive detail with actually Amazon links of everything you kind of need to get started. And I'll actually link that below. Since I created that video this past holiday season, I switched over to a Milwaukee packout system. And I really love it because they link in together and I can put the small uh, adapters in here like the individual drip emitters have all the connections in these drawers here it's got various drawers the best time to get these is during the holiday season because they go on sale they have this really great organization system of all different depths but i put all of my various emitters in here so these are two gallon per hour half gallon per hour and one gallon per hour various tiny connectors if you're using the quarter inch drip i tend to use the half inch size on the actual irrigation beds and i hope i have enough fittings to finish this project today um, I may be able to do all of it, but a small piece, and I'll show you what that is. But this just has various stuff in here. Um, but it's really nice because it closes down. None of these things can tr uh, travel between compartments, and they snap really nicely together. And you can see there's actually a button here, pulls out, and disconnects. And everything snaps in together in these systems, and there's various toolboxes, so it's just really nice system to have. But what we're going to be doing is adding drip to these arborvitae and the hydrangeas in the center here. I mentioned in the last video or a couple of videos ago that this bed gets a lot of uh, in-ground irrigation spray. So there's a sprinkler head here, here, and around here. And so all of these plants, all the annuals that I'll be planting, I'm hoping will receive enough irrigation from the overhead sprinklers. If for some reason they do not, we can come back through and always add more drip irrigation later. But I'm gonna be making a round of this black irrigation tubing around the side. Previously in this bed, I did have the brown drip irrigation, which I pulled out. And you can see it there, which I tend to reuse over and over as long as it's emitting properly. And so I'll roll this back up, cut it down as needed. And I can actually harvest some of the fittings off of it that I'll need for this project because I think I'll need one more. So we'll take this one here, which is nice. You can cut off the tubing and reuse those from time to time. Uh, there's still things in here I obviously need to clean out, but we're going to focus on the arborvitae, like I mentioned, and putting drip emitters right where those are needed. Uh, we may add some emitters to some of these things over here. Uh, that may not get as much sprinkler overhead spray, but that's not something I'm focusing on on this project. We're just going to focus on the arborvitae and the hydrangeas. And throughout the season, if we decide stuff needs a little more, then we'll add that as we need to. So you can see over here where this irrigation was is where I'm going to be tapping in. So it's actually cut off here right under this hosta, which is going to kind of hide it. And I'm going to be tapping into this and starting to create the circle around this whole arborvitae hedge and then i'll do a t and go out a little bit and do another circle around here one of the things i've learned about drip irrigation that's really helpful is you really want to kind of connect the system to itself if you can that keeps your pressure up which is really nice when you're doing these things if not if you don't have a well pressurized system and you're not using emitters that are pressure compensated, which I spoke a lot about in the video I did two years ago, then you may end up with instances of plants at the end of your run of uh, pipe or tubing not getting the same amount of water as that stuff at the front or not getting water at all. Um, that not getting water at all is probably not going to be the problem. It's going to be not getting the same amount of water. So you'll be watering inefficiently throughout the system. If you stick with pressure compensating emitters, which is something I always recommend buying, it will actually say on the package, uh, a lot of companies make some that are pressure compensating, some that are not. Most of them are pressure compensating though. So I tend to use the Rainbird variety because it's what Menard sells and I buy them in bulk. Uh, and these are the two gallon per hour ones that I'll be using for this project. I think I'm just gonna put one per 
Arbor Vitae over here. This is a part sun location, so it's in sun right now, but here soon it will be in shade for most of the rest of the day. It's also in shade part of the morning, so this is kind of the northeast facing side of the house. So it gets more, a little bit of morning light, a little bit of shade, a little bit of light about lunchtime, and then shade in the evening as the sun heads that way. Um, and so I'm hoping if I need to pop more, more emitters in there throughout the season, I can, which is a great thing about drip. You can add as needed, as long as your supply of water is sufficient enough. But we're going to start with one emitter on the Arborvitae, and I'm probably going to put two on the hydrangeas, just because hydrangeas are thirsty, and I want these to be successful. And then if you ever want to step down from drip irrigation later and remove an emitter, they have plugs where you can plug the lineup if you don't need it anymore. Although I tend to not like these because they can come out and then you'll have spray. It's not a huge problem. Uh, so in the alternative, I just usually, if I'm removing an emitter, I will cut out that emitter completely from the tube and add a coupling. So we're just going to get started. I'm going to start by cutting out this old T I have here. This is probably a different brand. It's probably from Dig, the brand Dig, which I got started with several years ago. Uh, and then I found Menards around us has a really great supply of irrigation. I'm actually going to go back. I have one of these small quarter inch um, adapters right here, and I want to remove that uh, because I'm no longer going to be using it. So I'm going to cut back behind here, then I'm going to strip off this T. And it's easier if you cut close to where it connects. Then you can take these secateurs or pruners, whatever you want to call them, go right down there and clean up your T. And get off all of this old tubing here so they can be reused. I never throw these things away whenever I'm doing a new drip system. I always reuse them because they're kind of expensive. You can get four of them about for a few dollars. But if we can reuse, not throw them away, that saves money which is really nice. And so I'm going to insert that in there. A tip about using this irrigation tubing, if you set it out in the sun before you start your project, um, it will greatly help it loosen up for you so it'll be easier to use. It can be really difficult because it wants to stay pretty uh, wrapped around itself. So if you do it in the sun and you kind of straighten it up as you go, it'll help a lot. I'm just going to start on this side right here, and then we're going to go around the bed, and I'll show you what I do to connect this really well. This adapter is a different variety, but most of these uh, brands connect together. So it might require a little bit of strength, and that's okay. It's not going anywhere. I've seen other people use like bands to put around here on their drip irrigation. Uh, I think that would be more important if you don't have a pressure reducing valve on these. And all of my drip is pressure reduced to like 30 to 40 PSI. So I don't have any issues with these blowing off. If you're not using pressure reducers, you might want to look into putting some clasps on them to make sure they don't blow off. And then the best part about it, these staples from a company called Sandbaggy, one of the most expensive things about putting drip in surprisingly can be the landscape staples. So what I encourage you to do is buy them in bulk online. Uh, I've got links to these. I'm not affiliated with them, but I found them a few years ago and they're really, really thick, high quality. Made by a company called Sandbaggy that creates sandbags for like water protection during storms. And they have worked really great, much better than those expensive things you'll find in the Lowe's um, in the landscape section. You will go broke real quick buying those, and they're super cheap. This is what they look like. There's actually one on the ground here from where I pulled this up. There's your comparison. And you can use a mallet to push these in, but the ground's kind of uh, loose right now because it's wet, so we'll just push those in. Let's move around, and I'll show you how this process works. So if you have any general questions about drip irrigation, I would highly encourage you to go watch drip 101 on my channel is what it's called and it goes over all the things and also read the comments because there are a lot of things i answered in that video for other people but we're just going to run this around best we can here and then i'll show you where i how i put these drippers in at the end i go around and lay all my tubing and then come back and put all the emitters in later i do have one i'm going to need to tap in here 
You can see this line runs down to the bed over here, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, but for now, we're not going to be doing any tapping either. We're just going to uh, tighten this down kind of close to these arborvitae, near the root zone, because that's where you're going to be putting them. And then you can always come back and add more landscape staples later to kind of tighten up the formation. I don't do a whole lot of that initially unless I'm having problems with it staying down. So now that I've made it back to right here where I was originally at with the T, I'm going to cut off however much I need to complete this connection. And that's going to be about right there. And then we're going to come in and connect this directly in to the T. Now that I've got this T pretty finished off, I like to put one landscape staple directly over the T to keep it real secure. So now I want to take this line that's running right here and connect it up there to another circle. So I'm going to insert another T next to this T that I already have right here at the bottom of the screen. Just grab the line. I like to put as many of these close together as I can, so if I have any issues, I know where all the connectors are. Just fit those together nicely. And then the new pathway to the hydrangeas here. You see how that line's curling up. There we go. Now I have another T right here. I'm going to run this line up here behind these hydrangeas. And I'm going to cut right here. Now we're going to insert another T. I've got a little bit of line left over here, and what I'm going to do is make another circle around these hydrangeas. Not concerned about watering the beach so much. Its roots will start to spread out this season. It'll have overhead water. It won't need as much water as these hydrangeas, but it'll be able to suck up some of the water that's coming in this general direction from the hydrangea drip that I'm putting in. So attach right there. Landscape staple for now anyway. So I want to make sure this is kind of close to the root balls as I mentioned. Put a staple in there. Staple in here. Then we're just going to cut this last little portion off and make it connect perfectly. So now what you have is a fully closed system. You have a distribution tubing that has no emitters in it. They're not emitting any water. Water will flow all the way through here, so we need to add our emitters to get water to the plants. And now's the point where you're going to switch tools. So I have all of these two gallon per hour emitters. So I'm going to put two on each hydrangea. That's four gallons per hour. I typically run my drip in lengths of 30 minutes. I don't even run them an hour. So that means these hydrangeas will be getting the equivalent of two gallon per hour. If you're going to run your emitters or your irrigation longer, you may choose to put um, more or fewer higher or lower emitting emitters. And then I have this little tool that's called a punch gun, which I have found really helpful rather than using the ones that you just press into the tubing that don't work so well. These actually, you squeeze them and they have a little puncher there that punches the tube perfectly in the center 
and I'm going to put one on each side of the root ball right here. Do one, two. And then you stick in these emitters, two gallons per hour, two gallons per hour, for a total of four gallons per hour. I'm going to do all of these exactly like this, and I'll be right back. Now, if your soil's pretty fluffy, you may find that these staples are not holding the soil in very good or holding the tube into the soil. They rust. I get the non-coated or non-stainless steel variety and they rust and then hold in really well in the soil. Okay, so I got all of the emitters connected. Uh, so there are two on each one of these hydrangeas. As I mentioned, two, two per gallon emitters. There are one in each of these arborvitae. And then I went ahead and connected this T that runs to the bed that's down there, right there. So it kind of runs around these, this hydrangea here, this little lime punch goes under the ground, under the yard, and into that bed right there and waters that stuff. There's a cutoff for that bed somewhere under this mulch that if I needed to stop watering it, I could since it is so shady. Haven't seen or had the need to use that often yet. As I showed in the last video, I connected quarter inch drip irrig irrigation around all of these hydrangeas that I just planted, which I typically don't recommend in the landscape, but since there were so many hydrangeas here and I needed some more flexibility of the tube, I did put quarter inch, but this will um, neck down how much you can send through the system for this specific run. So you would not want to use this in your entire landscape because it reduces the pressure and overall flow to the rest of the system. So because it's just connected back into itself, this one's fine. But like I wouldn't use that in this instance where I'm running it through the yard way down there. There would never be enough pressure to reach the bed down there quickly or efficiently. So you can see what this whole system looks like. It's two circles connected to each other. And then in the center, we're going to have all the annuals planted and kind of in between these arborvitae here. And this will all get overhead watering. Now I'm going to turn on the system. Since I do have a smartphone or a smart system through HydraWise, which is a hunter system, I can turn on this part of the garden. Now, I haven't turned on this bed since um, last year, so this will be interesting if anything blows up on me, but you can see it here. I'm just gonna hit start, and you can hear it connect over there, and it'll start filling all of these tubes with water as it runs through, and then these emitters will start dripping here soon. Let's keep an eye on it. Since this is new line, it'll take a little bit to get filled up completely. There we go. So there's a lot of air in there initially, but as the air comes out, you can see it'll just slowly drip two gallons per hour from each emitter. And then these are also working as well. And I always go through initially before these get covered up with mulch uh, and run the system to make sure that all of the emitters are working correctly. One thing I added to the system up here are some uh, micro sprayers that actually pump out of one quarter inch drip irrigation. So they're connected to the half inch and then they have a one quarter inch that run out of it. They make these specifically for drip systems and then it sprays out. I also have them along this pathway and I actually have a cutoff on them in case I don't want to use them for part of the year, but we'll turn those on and test them since I just got these new sprayers hooked up. See, they come right up there. So this system's working much better than it did last year. I was having issues with um, pressure in the system. I had run this system out of capacity. And so now that these are coming up full, I'm much happier because I had to keep it off a lot last year. So this is really good for me. And you can see how far these spray. So you can adjust and buy different heads for them. I really like these if you have to water a path. You obviously can't do that with drip. But it makes all these hostas happy. So it actually sprays all the way over there and will provide a little extra to the hydrangeas. But since I have them all connected in right here, if I ever wanted to cut them off, I just flip the switch and the heads go back into the ground. And it's almost as if you didn't know they were there. So let's check while we're here and running the system, some of the older 
uh, drip emitters that I added five years ago now to this incredible hydrangea hedge. So we can get under here and see if we can find some. They're also on these arborvitae. So let's pull back some of this mulch that I put in here. You can see the quarter inch tube that was run over here and the water coming out of it perfectly fine five years later. You can also have them here with these arborvitae hiding under here somewhere, maybe covered with mulch. But there you go, here it is. There's the drip. And here's the half inch tubing that it's connected to. Now, I've seen sometimes that people have to replace their drip irrigation every so often. My system is five years old and we have really hard water in my county. They actually just started treating the water, I think within the past year, to try and get that hardness down. Um, and I've not noticed a whole lot at my house. I do have a water softener. Of course, like the irrigation is not running through the water softener because that would be a ton of water so softening uh, product. But I have not noticed the plugs becoming plugged up or the emitters becoming plugged up with like calcium deposits or anything like that not working. And as you saw, those that are five years old, not been touched since they were installed, are working perfectly fine. So you may from here and there, um, if you have a weird system or you're using this by a hose, there may get junk in the line, um, little pieces of dirt that may clog the emitters, and that may be something you have to address. Mine's a closed system. It comes straight through the meter at the road, through our irrigation meter, up through the backflow, so it's straight directly from the county. I'm not hooking and unhooking directly from the water source so i've never had any of those issues but the water itself has not caused my emitters to clog is what i'm saying um, if you do live in a situation where um, there are there's harder water or if you're on a well without a filtration system this might not be something you could do um, but i've really enjoyed the benefits of drip irrigation i will run these for 30 minutes a few times a week and all of the plants in this location, this is one of the benefits of having my moss hedge there, um, really likes it. They do a really good job. Now, I do tend to get a little more weeds in this area where this is simply overspraying rather than doing drip because all of the ground's being watered. But they're usually not anything more serious that I can't just pull pretty easily at the beginning of the season. And then it's kind of uh, just maintenance from time to time and upkeep from there. Now on the rainbird tubing specifically, I've not had any issues, but with the dig tubing that I think is sometimes distributed at Home Depot, I have some whistling issues, particularly with the zone. Uh, some of the older tubing, it whistles uh, as it comes out of the emitters, which is not an issue. It's just kind of weird when the irrigation comes on, you know it's running though. Uh, and it's not really super loud or anything, but I'm happy that this project is done. Now I can make sure as it's starting to get warm this next week, uh, this system is fully closed in and I can start running it. All these hydrangeas will be happy. All of these, as you can see, the shadows are moving more this way as we get later in the day. So these are going to be perfect location for these hydrangeas, I hope. They'll get enough sun to make them happy, but not enough that they'll want to burn. And then we have these nice arborvitae. This is going to look really great, I hope, in another week or two after I get all of the annuals in. And you can see how far that sprayer is emitting over even to right here into the beds. So uh, no issues with any of this stuff getting water, and I don't need as much irrigation as I used to. And these are still coming out really nicely. So other than the drip irrigation that I need to add to the pergola, uh, and I need to set up a few of the containers. I've already set up this container, but I was waiting till we definitely had our last freeze before I set out the timing device for the containers because I use a Rainbird or an Orbit system there. Um, I will be almost done with the drip and won't have to worry about watering most things throughout the season. So stick around, uh, like, and subscribe if you want to see that irrigation done. I've already got the line run. This is the line, it runs all the way down the side of the house to the pergola. We just gotta connect it in to the system in a few more weeks and then run the line on the actual pergola itself. Thanks for joining me guys. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care everyone, bye.